Okay. Let's get this started from the current slide. Okay. Let's just hit a couple of, well, no, it's doing, of issues. Uh, since the question was raised about when things are going to be in, um, I'm hoping maybe to receive more than one research paper from this class, especially if that, that the grade you cannot drop, okay? I've only got one in so far, so please get the others in. Tomorrow is the last day you can get that last remaining bonus point, and then next week, it's uh, last week you can turn it in without losing points. So please get them to me sooner the better. Okay, test one. I think there's still one, two, three people who haven't turned in test one. Okay, so please get those to me. Test two. I've only gotten two people to turn in test two. Please get those to me. Test three, as I said before, as soon as possible, okay? Which goes for the other two tests as well, okay? And let's see where we'll be heading from here. Uh, we're in chapter six now, last chapter in the, the... And why is this not working? You know, the system has been kind of crazy. Hopefully that will do it. Nope. We tried. Okay. I don't know what's going on here, folks. There we go. Sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. I was blaming it last night on the projector at the other campus, but now it's giving me fits here. Okay. Is the research paper on No, no, no. Okay. Research paper could have been done any time up till now. It has to be done by next week. Okay, let's get back to uh, what I was talking about before. Uh, at the end of class next Thursday, let's see, there's about two things. Okay. I'd like to have the earlier test in soon so I don't have them all great at once. Okay. Uh, and next Thursday, I'll be returning all those tests to you. Now, research papers I can't return to you because they sometimes ask for samples of student writing, so I have to hang on to those. But the, research, uh, but the test I will be returning, which means the translation of that is if you don't have it in by next Thursday, that's a zero score on every test that's not in by next 30, Thursday because once I give them back, I can't receive any more in. Okay? So all those first three tests have to be in by Thursday. I want them sooner than that, but they have to be in by Thursday because I'm returning them to you then. At the end of class on Thursday, I will be giving you two tests. One will be a very short test on Chapter 6, much shorter than the test you have in your possession now, okay? Uh, probably just a single page. And then the comprehensive final will also be a very short test, a single page, okay? And those are due back any time the following week, with some possible exception. Or any of you graduating this term. One, that's all. You have to have your final, the last test and the final, into me by Wednesday. Because I think grades are due for you noon on Wednesday, I believe. So I have to have them Wednesday morning. Okay? The rest of you, any time Thursday. Okay? The reason it, I can't say Friday is Friday is graduation day over on the Birmingham West campus. I won't even be here uh, on this campus that Friday. Now, I will come back to this campus the following Monday 
I, if you do turn anything into me on Friday, like slide it under my door, I'll get those things graded Monday morning. But I don't want that many things to grade. Okay, my door is only that thick. Okay, so please uh, get things to me sooner rather than later. Okay. Uh, all right. Any questions on how we're going to wrap things up? Okay. Any questions on trick that we've done so far? Okay. We're on, in Chapter 6, like I said, additional topics in trigonometry. 6.3 is vectors in the plane. Uh, and we are at the heading unit vectors. This is on page 420, just about the middle of the page. A little on the upper side of that. Okay, in many applications of vectors, it's useful to find a unit vector that has the same direction as the given non-zero vector v. Okay? What you can think of the unit vector as is being the direction vector. It has magnitude of 1, okay? So all basically it's telling you is what direction this vector is going. That's why it has the same direction. Of course, it's a non-zero vector. Zero vector has no direction, okay? It's not pointing anywhere because it has no magnitude. So it has no direction. But any vector that's not a zero vector has a direction. The unit vector is the same direction as that one, but one unit in length. You can have an incredibly small vector, 0.7 or 0.07, you know, as its magnitude, where the unit vector would be same direction but of magnitude of 1. Or if you have an incredibly large vector, like 3 million in one direction, the unit vector in that direction would be the same direction, but at V, but magnitude, unit, magnitude of one. To do this, to find the unit vector in the direction of a non-zero vector V, guess what we do? We start with the vector V, okay? Calculate its magnitude, divide by that, okay? So the vector V divided by its magnitude is going to be the unit vector in the direction of V, but with a magnitude of 1. Okay? Now the reason is, the magnitude of V is, is whatever it is. If you divide by that magnitude, now you get a magnitude of 1, but you still have that same direction. Note that U is a scalar multiple of V. Okay? It could be a smaller scalar multiple or larger, depending on how big or small V is. The vector U has a magnitude of 1 in the same direction as v, the vector u is called the unit vector in the direction of v. I think we've said that about three or four or five times now. Okay. So let's do example four. Is that the next one? Yes. Wait. I think the numbering got off somewhere here. In your text, this is example five. Okay. Yeah. Same one. Okay. How would we find a unit vector in the direction of V, which in component notation, I'm free Monday from 2 to 6. Okay. Yeah, on this campus. Okay. I'm in this classroom. My, my last class on Monday ends at 155, so I'm still usually up here for several minutes after that, maybe okay. even until 2.30 or so, but at some point I go down to my office at 265. Okay. 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 I think I'll be grading for the rest of my life, you know, but hopefully that'll be a while. Okay. So, find the unit vector in the direction of V, and this is V in component notation, remember that? That's definitely not a unit vector, is it? No, okay. So we need to find the unit vector in that direction and verify the result has a magnitude of 1. So how would we do that? Usually we name unit vectors, not always, but usually we name it. Let me get my pen set up. Okay. We name it U, not always. Now how I designate a unit vector the book doesn't do this, but I do. I put a cap on it, okay? That indicates to me that's a unit vector because you can have other vectors, you, that aren't unit vectors, 
That's going to indicate it's a unit vector. V, I'll write with an arrow over it. That's just a vector. So how do I calculate U? Unit vector in the same direction of V. It's the first thing I've got to do. Yes, it has to have a denominator. You're absolutely right. What is that denominator? Okay, the magnitude of what? Of what? Numerator. Okay, the numerator is V, and the denominator is the magnitude of V. Okay? So the first thing, we already know what V is. That's negative 2, 5. What we need to do is figure out what the magnitude of V is. So let's do that. What is the magnitude of V? We've done it before. What is that? Anybody? Okay. Okay. Negative 2 squared plus 5 squared. Okay, and that would be the square root of 4 plus 25, which is the square root of 29. Prime number, it doesn't have a rational square root, so we're just going to use that. So it will be this, the square root of 29. Now remember, the magnitude of a vector is always positive. Okay, so I'll always use the principal square root, the positive square root of whatever that turned out to be. Now that's sort of a, maybe an easy way to write it, but it's not quite maybe completely clear. We need to write that as a component. This will be minus 2 over root 29, comma, 5 over root 29. Okay. There I claim I found, or you found, that unit vector in the same direction of V, but supposedly a magnitude of 1. How can we verify that that indeed is a magnitude of 1? Calculate its magnitude, which is the square root of... over root 29 squared, that goes through Athens, Georgia, by the way, okay, squared, plus 5 over root 29 squared, okay, and what is minus 2 over root 29 squared? Not negative. When you square something, it's always positive. 4 over 29 plus 25 over 29. And guess what that is? It's, say again. Wait, wait, where are you getting 2? Is that what you say? 4 plus 25 is? Okay. 29 over? 29, which is? The square root of 1, which is 1. Yes, its magnitude is 1. Absolutely. So that is the unit vector. It's in the same direction of V. It's just a scalar multiple of V. That's what this tells you right here. You... Multiply this vector V by 1 over root 29, whatever that is, okay? That's a scale of multiple. And component notation, that would be what it is. And then when you verify it, you find out that is indeed magnitude of 1 in the same direction of V. Make sense? All right, good deal. Let me, it's okay to erase? All right. Let's see how they did it. The unit vector in the direction of V is V over the magnitude of V. Well, V is negative 2, 5 in component notation. Magnitude of V is the square root of negative 2 squared plus 5 squared, just like we did. 
which is 1 over root 29, which is what we got, times V, which is uh, the magnitude, I mean the component notation, negative 2 phi, which shows it's a scalar multiple of that vector. So therefore it has to have the same direction. Okay? Uh, to write that in component notation, then it's negative 2 over root 29, comma, 5 over root 29. Okay? Now to verify that it's a magnitude of 1, you take those components and square under the square root. So it would be the square root of negative 2 over root 29 squared plus 5 over root 29 squared would be 4 over 29 plus 25 over 29, which of course is, most of the time, 20, square root of 29 over 29, which is 1. Perfect. It is the unit vector, and it's in the direction of the original vector v. Any questions? Got it? All right. All right. Finally, the classroom was doing a lot better. Okay. Allison's here. And Andrea's here. Okay, we're just missing Gavin and Jalen. Okay. I think I may have mentioned it to you last time. Uh, it was a bit of shocking news to me. Uh, but I saw Gavin Monday, I think it was, and he told me that uh, the guy who was killed at the Galleria was his brother, or maybe a half-brother, I don't know, not the same last name, but a while, so um, he, you know, remember that, or kind of honor that. Okay, let's move on from there. Here are a couple of unit vectors we know in lot. The unit vector 1, 0, do you know that's a unit vector? Yeah, yeah. because it's magnitude is the square root of 1 squared plus 0 squared, which is 1 squared is 1, plus 0 is 0, that is 1, square root of 1 is 1. Yes, and same thing here. Those are both unit vectors, and these are called our standard standard unit vectors in the plane, okay? We give them special names. Little i, bold little i, or little i with a carrot on top, is why I write it, is the vector in the x direction, uh, 1, 0, and little j, bold little j, or with a carrot on top, that's 1, 0, in the y direction, okay? And here's how we represent them. Obviously, that's a vector. Horizontal vector, magnitude 1. Vertical vector, magnitude 1. Okay. Unit vectors in the I, x and y direction. Notice that the lowercase i bold, written in boldface, is used to distinguish it from the imaginary unit, which is usually written as a italicized, which I don't like in italics, okay? But it's not bolded. I don't like bold either but no symbols on top of it. So it's that little i by itself is the square root of negative 1. That's for complex numbers, okay, uh, with imaginary components. That's the imaginary unit. Not talking about that here. This is a bold i, little i, or one with a carrot on top, which indicates a vector. Okay. Those vectors can be used to represent any vector V, which is V1, V2, V1 in the X direction, V2 in the Y direction, like this. That would be V1 times the unit vector in the X direction, I, plus V2 times the unit vector in the Y direction, J, that would be V1, I, plus V2, J. And I think I probably mentioned it last time, that that's how we used to write back in the day before I ever had seen Component notation like this with the angle bracket, this is what I would have thought you meant by component notation. V1 is the x component, V2 is the y component. So this is the same as that. The scalars V1 and V2, they're, they're not vectors. 
vector, these are vectors, but these are the components of the vector, which are scalar quantities. Uh, they're called the horizontal and vertical components of the vector V. Okay? So, the vector sum, D1i plus V2j, is called the linear combination of vectors i and j. Any vector in the plane, any vector in the plane, can be written as a, li a linear combination of those two standard unit vectors. Now, if you're in the plane, if you're out here in space, then you're going to be a third vector for the z direction. Okay? But in the plane, you're, you're set. If you have a vector that's shooting off over here, okay? That would be minus something another x plus something, I mean i plus something another j. That would be x. Down here, you had a thing that you just, uh, these would be the components, those would be the unit vectors. Every vector in the plane could be written that way. Now, if y'all notice I'm messing with my eye too much, I'm trying not to touch it. I woke up yesterday morning with some chunk of vitus in the eye. It hurts and itches like crazy, and it's everything I can do to keep from wanting to just claw it out. But, uh, and it also hurts to look at bright lights, and that's exactly what I'm looking at, and then this light comes in here. Uh, when I was grading papers this morning, when they were taking their test, it was driving it crazy. Sorry about that. Okay. So, whoa, that's all they say about unit vectors. Uh, we did uh, example five, and they skipped example six and seven. So let's go back to right here and do example six and seven. Now this was example five in the book, but it said example four in the slide set. When we went to the new edition, they put a few more examples in. There weren't many changes. And for a long time, I still used the uh, DVD that came with the last edition. But finally, I said, you know, I really need, they don't send us DVDs anymore. You have to pull it off the online. So I said, well, I'll pull it off the, you know, materials I have online. I pulled it off, and it was exactly the same stuff as the old edition. They never updated their, uh, their supplementary material for the new edition. So that's why it's still behind. I'm not using an old source. This was a new source. So here's example five. Find a unit vector. No, that's, we just did that. Sorry, six. Example six. Writing a linear combination of unit vectors. Let u be a unit vector with the initial point. So u is a unit vector uh, with initial point. Two negative five. Okay. And a terminal point. This isn't right. No, 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 no. I misread. Sorry. That's why I was mentioning before and then slipped right into it. Let you be a vector, the vector. So that's just a vector. It's not a unit vector with initial point of 2, negative 5, and terminal point of negative 1, 3. Okay. In other words, you could have written this as PQ, you know, just like we did before. So it says write U as a linear combination of the standard unit vectors I and J. All right. Now, how would you proceed to do that? It's probably going to be a multi-step process. What would be your first step? Anybody? Okay. How do you find it? That may be a good thing to do, but how would you do that? Ah, okay, let's find the vector. And what would the vector V? U, the vector U would be what? How are you going to write it? Uh, component notation? Or how? 
It's up to you. Okay. What would be your X component? Mm, always in everything, I want to say, everything dealing with vectors, it's always final minus initial. In this case, terminal minus initial. Okay? Always remember it's that way. So what's your terminal X? Negative 1. And eh, minus 2. This x minus that x, okay, comma, okay, uh, always final, yeah, okay, 3, minus a negative 5, perfect, okay, now what would that turn out being? Negative 3, comma, Eight. Got it. So there's your vector u. Okay, you found that. Good first step. Now what? <clears throat> okay, find the magnitude would be a good idea. What's the magnitude of u? plus 8 squared, which would be the square root of 9 plus 64, which is the square root of 73. Another prime number, I think. I can't think of anything that will go into that, so it's certainly not a rational number. It's an irrational number. Okay? All right, so you got that. What do we do with that? The what? Yeah. Okay. And what will that be? Now the trouble is, since they named the vector u, I don't have another name for the unit vector. Okay. Uh, but wait a minute. I'm sorry. Yeah. I've been doing the unit vector again. They didn't ask for unit vectors. It's all Ron's fault. Okay. He's the cause for all this, okay? Thank you. Okay. Uh, no, sorry. We didn't need the, this at all. All it says is let u be the vector with initial point, terminal point, write u, again, I was thinking unit vector, as a linear combination of the standard unit vectors, okay? As soon as you have this, negative 3, eight, then all you do is write that how? Negative 3 in the i direction, and plus, plus eight, 8 in the j direction. Perfect. That's all you do. My goodness, I was making it so much more difficult. I was trying to get a unit vector in that direction. That was going to be a pain in the neck. Doable, but very much a pain in the neck. Especially since I didn't have anything to name it, since they already named the non-unit vector u. Okay. So... That's all you had to do. As soon as you get the components, the X component goes with the I, the Y component goes with the J. I mean, it's just that. So, to me, that's also a component notation. But they call it the IJ notation. Okay. There is a checkpoint there. You can do that and not screw it up like I did. Okay. They do have the figure in the text which shows the illustration of that. That floats your boat, go for it. All right. Let's move on to example seven. Let's see if we can get this one right. Anyone need this a little bit longer? Okay. 
let u equal, here they go again, equal minus 3i plus 8j. That sounds awfully familiar, doesn't it? Okay. And vector v is equal to 2i minus j. Okay. Find two u minus three v. Is anyone left? Uh, yeah, one. Yeah, two people turned it. Was anyone left in the classroom? Okay. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Thanks. Mm. Oh, my eyes hurt. Okay, how are we going to find 2u minus 3v? Anybody? Exactly. Do exactly what it says. 2 times, what's u? Negative 3i plus 8j minus 3 times v. What's v? Anybody? 2i minus j. Do the math. 2 times negative 3i would be. Anybody? Here's Jalen. Two times negative three I would be second. Negative six I. Two times eight J would be plus sixteen J. Minus three times two I would be. Minus 3 times 2i would be negative 6i. Excuse me. Okay. And negative 3 times negative j would be plus 3j. Okay. Now what? Combine like terms or like vectors, you might say. What does that give you? Negative 12i. Plus, what do you say? Is it? Sixteen plus three. Minus three times minus j is minus times minus. Okay, but th I'm using that minus sign times that minus sign. Oh, yeah. Right. So it would be 19J. 19J. Okay, excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. All right. Is that your final answer? Negative 12I plus 19J. Excellent. There is a checkpoint, just like there is for every one of them. And by the way, all the checkpoints have audio video solutions at uh, either in English or Spanish at LarsonPreCalculus.com. All right. So, writing them in IJ notation and doing the math in IJ notation is just like writing them and doing the math in component notation. It's just that you write the components down I and J, whereas before you just do them by position. So, any questions on that? All right. Any questions? Okay. Let's see where we pick up the slides again. Well, they did have something at the bottom of the page. Said in example 7, you could perform the operations in component notation, which is the same thing I was saying. You get exactly the same result. Because you were doing it in component notation, just write the components with I's and J's on them. 
that time. So now we're moving on to direction angles. What do we mean by that? All right. Now we go back to you being a unit vector. Sort of have to read it carefully to know. So u now is a unit vector such that theta is the angle measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis to that vector u. Now if the vector u is down here, you go all the way around to that vector there. Counterclockwise. Uh, from the positive x-axis all the way around to u. Then the terminal point of u lies on the unit circle. Why? Because u is a unit vector. It has a radius or a, a magnitude of 1. Okay? Uh, and you have u is an xy pair, okay? Now, just happens to be that on the unit circle, if you remember this, the x is, from the very first chapter we did, chapter 4, on the unit circle, the components of this thing is uh, the x is the cosine theta and y is the sine theta. Because the hypotenuse is always 1. The, the, the magnitude of that unit vector is 1. You're on a unit circle, so the uh, x is equal to the cosine theta and y is equal to sine theta. So then rather than writing it as xy, you can write cosine theta sine theta, where theta is that angle measured clockwise from the horizontal, positive horizontal axis. Okay? Or in IJ notation, cosine theta i plus sine theta j. Okay? Shown here. Because that is the unit vector. The angle theta is called the direction uh, angle of that vector u. Okay? Always with zero being the positive x axis, your direction angle there would be, looks like maybe close to 45 degrees. Over here would be something between 90 and 180. Down here it would be something. 180 and 270. Over here, it would be something between 270 and 360. Now, if you're dealing with radians, you go to the pi halves, pi halves, pi, pi, and three halves, pi, and three halves, pi. Two pi. Okay. Whatever you're using. Remember, the unit vector, this is a unit vector, and we said it was. Magnitude is always one. So that defines the unit circle for you if you go around there. And the unit circle, the x is always cosine theta, and y is always sine theta. Okay, because what? Cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is 1. Okay, so it has to be a unit vector. Okay, now let's suppose that u is a unit vector with a direction angle theta. If B now is AI plus BJ, not necessarily a unit vector, but it's any vector that makes that same angle theta with the positive x-axis, then it has to be in the same direction as U. Okay? Yeah. Okay? And you can write <coughs> that vector V, since it's in the same direction as U, which is cosine theta sine theta, it's just a scalar multiple of that. And what's the scalar that you multiply it by? It's magnitude. So it's magnitude of V times that unit vector <coughs> cosine theta sine theta. Which you could write in IJ notation is the magnitude of V times cosine theta I plus magnitude of V times sine theta J. Or you could have written the magnitude of V here in brackets in a brackets cosine theta I plus sine theta j. Or you write it distributed across. It doesn't matter which. All right. <clears throat> now, because that vector v, which is ai plus bj, and we're already told it's in the same direction as that unit vector u that we were dealing with, uh, is equal to this. Magnitude of v times cosine theta i plus magnitude of v times sine theta j, just like we did before on the previous slide, follows that the direction angle theta for v is determined from the tangent of theta, which is the ratio of sine and cosine. 
the question I've given. Okay? And if you multiply numerator and denominator by magnitude of V, then what you have here is V sine theta, which is your J component over V magnitude of V cosine theta, which is your X component, okay? Your I component, which is from here, V over A. So your tangent theta is equal to V over A. And what is tangent theta? Usually, rise over rho. That's exactly what you're dealing with here. The rise is your vertical part, the rho is the horizontal. So that's nothing new from what we've done before. Tangent theta is the ratio of the y to, to x. Okay. So, find the direction angle for each vector. Here's vector u, not a unit vector u, vector u, 3i plus 3j. Okay, what is the direction angle for that vector? What can you tell me? What you want to name that direction vector? You can name it anything you want to, Fred or Sam or Susan or whatever, but typically they give it a Greek, lowercase Greek letter. You don't have to. Theta, that's everybody's favorite usually. Theta is that direction vector. And what can you tell me about the theta? We just did it a little earlier. Previous slide. God, my throat's hurting. I'm just falling apart today. <clears throat> what can you tell me about that theta? What trig function helps determine it? Tangent theta is equal to what? Okay. Okay, that's certainly true. It's, it's cosine, uh, sine over cosine, but let's... Go back a slide. What was tangent theta? Even lower. B over A, which are the X and Y components of the vector, right? So, in this case, it would be 3 over 3, which would be, or is, 1. And what angle has a tangent as... Well, angle theta has a tangent of 1. Pi over 4. Theta is equal to pi force. Okay? Or any pi multiple added to that, plus n pi. You know, so, but we don't even need to do that. We know where this one lives. 3 in the i direction, 3 in the j direction. It's in the first quadrant. So, yeah, it is pi force. You don't need to add anything to it. Pi force. Okay? Can we do the same for B? Now, I'm going to put that theta sub A, theta sub A. Now, let's do the same for the B one. Tangent of theta B is equal to what? Negative 4 over 3. Okay, and theta b then would be? Now that's not one of our favorite angles, is it? Don't think so. So how are we going to deal with that? How do we undo a tangent? How do you undo a square? Square rooted. Okay, how do you undo a tangent? 
by the way, the square root is the blank function of the square, square root function. And your calculator that's often labeled. Based on the inverse. Inverse. It's the inverse tangent. Exactly. The inverse tangent, or arc tangent, if you prefer that, of minus four thirds. Second. By the way, if you prefer radian mode, this would be what? Pipe? Oh, it is radian mode. If you prefer a degree, what would that be? Pi forces? 45 degrees. I think they are probably going to go with, with radian, so we'll leave it there. What is the inverse tangent? Be sure you're in radian mode then of negative 4 thirds. By the way, where are you, Waldo? 3i minus 4j, where are you? 4th quadrant, exactly. So then that theta b, remember theta is measured clockwise around here. That would be in the 4th quadrant. So did you find what it was yet? Okay. So theta b would be negative 0 0.95 radians you're oh nine three sorry i can't hear uh let me get my pen yeah i hurt 0 0.93 radians right you're in radio mode yeah okay thought so all right except a negative angle is done clockwise so if we're going to do it the way they said we were going to do it counterclockwise around, how would you get that to be a positive ratio? And it's kind of what I was saying before, but I said up there you didn't need to because you knew you were in the first quadrant. Uh, plus two pi? Plus two pi? Yes, that would do it for you. Normally, a plus pi would be okay too, but you see this when you go negative 0.93, you're down here, and you're in the right angle, in the right quadrant, but you need to add 2 pi to it to get it a positive value. So add 2 pi to negative 0.93 on your calculator. See what you get. Five point three five, and that would be radians. Let's see. Can't find where they are. Here it is. And I can't believe it. They did it in. They did it in degrees. <laughs> Amazing. All right. I would have sworn they would have used this. Uh, you can either go back and do your initial calculation in degrees and then do the th your number here, or you can convert that uh, 5.35 to degrees using a deg your conversion thing. And what does that come out? I don't care what way you do it. Goodness gracious. What you get? You say the just convert the five point three five. You can do that. Remember that how that those conversions go? Uh, uh, times. Okay, so you want degrees in the bottom, radian. I'm sorry, degrees on top, radians in the bottom, and that would be pi radians is the same as 180 degrees. 
So multiply the 5.35 by 180 and divide by pi. That's exactly, oh, well, they got 0.87, so it's about 307, okay? It's approximately 307 degrees. And you see why your decimal came out different? You rounded to three digits here, so if you tried to do 307, blah, 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 you get way different from this because you can only get basically three digits. They got 306 point something another, we got 306 point something another, they're both around the 307. <clears throat> they will always be exactly right, but they're pretty close. Okay. There is an audio video solution for the checkpoint. I would do that soon, very soon. Why they went back to degrees, I don't know, but still correct answers. Okay. All right. That's how we did it. Let's see how they do it. Okay, I think you'll find it slightly different, but not the same. Okay, the direction angle determined by tangent theta is equal to B over A. In this case, it's 3 over 3, which is 1, and that gives you a angle of 45 degrees. Since they're doing degrees. And you knew which quadrant you're in, so you know that is a, is an acceptable answer. If you had had a problem that you were down here, that would still have given you an angle of 45 degrees because your inverse tangent, well, it's not this one, you can figure it on this one, but on the next one. Uh, let's go on and show that. Direction angle on the second one is still B over A, and that's negative 4 over 3. So uh, we know that negative that 3i minus 4j is in quadrant 4, okay? Theta has a lie there, and its reference angle is the magnitude of that, okay? Which is uh, uh, negative, <clears throat> what, 9273. We rounded to 93. That's where a little bit of ours came. And then uh, they got that to be negative 53.13 degrees. Now, I don't know if you recall, reference angles are always positive angles. Always positive angles. That's why they have the absolute value signs there. But rather than just writing it as that, they're emphasizing it's still the absolute value of the negative number. Uh, so you... Ah, that hurts. You would go clockwise from the horizontal positive horizontal axis uh, 53.13 degrees if you could do that precisely okay and uh, so it follows that you are if that's your reference angle 53.13 degrees subtract that from 360 and you'll get the 306 degrees okay okay uh, if you went to the reference angle. If you left it with the minus angle, which we had, just add that to 360. You get the same result for you want. Okay. Any questions there? 307 is what I would call that. 306.87. All right. <clears throat> We're now ready for a couple of applications. And they love their applications to be Nautical or aerospace, okay, and this one's uh, an airplane. Okay. Find the component form of the vector that represents the velocity of an airplane descending at a speed of 150 miles per hour at an angle 20 degrees below the horizontal. Okay, so find the component form of the vector that represents that velocity. Okay, and when it says the speed, that means the magnitude, 150 miles per hour. The angle is 20 degrees below the horizontal, okay? 
and they say as shown here. Okay. If they hadn't said as shown here, it could have been over here too. Okay. So they said we're at this point. Okay. So that affixes it for us. 20 degrees below the horizontal. Horizontal is 180 degrees, right? So 20 degrees below that would be 200 degrees. So that's how they start this. Okay. Now they want component form component form of the vector. Okay. So that's going to be some number, angle bracket, some number, comma, some number, close angle bracket. Okay. What numbers are going to go in there? I'm going to flip back a couple slides as a brain jar for you, okay? Jar your brain, okay? Right here, ooh, not there. One before that, two before that. Here, okay? Since you don't know the A and B of this problem like we did in the last problem, we do know your B magnitude of B, that's the speed of the plane. Magnitude of velocity, in fact, okay, speed. And you know the angle theta, so you know the cosine theta, and you know sine theta. So yeah, we can get the component notation uh, in fact written in component notation it's that. V is uh, You could have written this angle bracket magnitude B cosine theta comma magnitude B sine theta close bracket. That's the form I would say go with. Okay. It'll get there in a minute. Okay, here we go. Find the component form of the vector that represents the velocity of an airplane descending at a speed of 150 miles per hour at an angle 20 degrees below the horizontal, as shown here. Okay. Component form of that vector, let's call it V, okay, would be angle bracket. Okay, magnitude of V times which goes first? Which is related to the x-axis, the adjacent side, which trig function? Yes. Sure. So what do we put here? Cosine, cosine for the x. <laughs> Say cosine on the right side. Cosine of. Now what do you want to use? Do you want to use the 200 or you want to use the 20? It's kind of your choice, but 
it has consequences as all choices do. So what you want to use? You want to use a 20. Okay. Now, the consequence of using 20 degrees is now you have to figure out what sign to put with it because any acute angle, cosine sine is always going to be positive. Obviously here, something's not positive. Okay, and this would be sine of 20. One of those, in fact, neither of those are positive, right? So if you're going to use an acute angle, you have to put the signs in. The advantage of using 200 degrees, your calculator will figure that for you. Because the calculator will always do uh, cosine of uh, and sine also 200 degrees will give you negative values for each of those. So that's why I said you pay your money, but you take your choice. Or you take your choice, and now you have to pay the piper. So what would you have to do then? If you use 20 degrees, you know that's going to be positive. The magnitudes are always positive. But what do you, can you look at that vector and tell what are the components? Negative on X, negative on Y. So you have to put the minus signs in. Right? If you did it using the 200 degrees, it's already going to be done for you. So it's whether you're lazy enough to want to not write an extra zero, or you're lazy enough not have to write the minus signs. But you got to be determined which one. All right. I thought I could convince them. Okay. All right. Normally, you can't just add a zero and it'd be the same result, but in this case, it is. Okay. So, what does that give you? Be sure you're in degree mode now when you do the calculations. Oh, you got to figure out what. Oh, we know what the magnitude of V is, don't we? 150 miles an hour. Speed is the magnitude of velocity. That's a physics concept. If you don't know it already, you can. Uh, you got it now. Okay. So this will be 150 times the cosine of 200 degrees, comma, 150 times the sine of 200 degrees. All right. Do the math and see what you get. Anybody? Okay, multiply that by 150, and you get negative. One thirty or forty something. Let's call it 141, okay? And what would be the 150 times sine 200? Negative again. This will be much less, maybe around 40 something. 51. And the sine of 200 is negative 1.34. Okay. Okay, if you want to write those out, you could. I was just looking for the final. So, in component notation, it would be a, something on the neighborhood of negative 141, negative, comma, negative 51. Let's see. Yeah, they did one. They got 52. One fifty times the sine of 200 degrees. How did they mess that up? They said sine of 200 degrees was 0 0.3420. Yeah, I didn't simplify it at all. Okay. 
Okay. And you got 51? They must have... 51? Say again? 51.3. Okay, maybe they just did a misprint. They put 52.3. So I'll agree. If, if you put... Put in the numbers correctly, I'll go with yours. Oh, ha. If you look in the book, ha, when you see it written up above, they write it as 52.30 twice, and then when they did the magnitude, they put 51.30. So I, I believe you, 51.30, because they checked it. So that's just a typo in the book. And this is which edition? 10th edition <laughs> and they still have this typo in here not good folks all right got it that was okay let's see what they do on the slide set i'm going to erase this let's see what they do here the velocity vector v has a magnitude of 150 that's what speed is and the direction angle of theta equal 200 so if you do Velocity is magnitude of velocity, which is 150, cosine theta, which is cosine 200, I plus sine magnitude of 1, well, 150 times the magnitude, <laughs> 150 times the sine of 200 degrees. That's exactly what we just said. That's exactly what we just said. And they get it right this time. They got negative 51 so they got it right in the slide set got it wrong in the book that's pretty strange okay and there's the component notation which actually i count both of those as component notations now sorry my throat's hurting you can check that v has a magnitude of 150 by and that's what they did in the book too the square root of <clears throat> negative 140.96 squared plus negative 51.30 squared and see what that gives you. They say it comes up square root of 22,501.41 and when you do that it's approximately 100, they say. They do have a checkpoint there. I would seriously think about doing the checkpoint. Okay. Have we got time for one more? Example 10? Three minutes. I think we can do it. A force of... A force of... Where, oh, there it is. 600 pounds is required to pull a boat and trailer up a ramp inclined at 15 degrees with the horizontal. Now, this isn't to scale, but we're going to call this 15 degrees to the horizontal. And you require a force of 600 pounds. Okay, a very typical physics problem. Required to pull a boat and trailer up a ramp at 15 degrees from the horizontal. Find the combined weight of the boat and trailer. Okay. Requires a little bit of physics here, and perhaps we can't do this one because I think I'm going to have to, to find some things first. So let's do that next time. Sorry, I wish we had had a chance to finish that today. But we'll pick up there next time. Let me give you some... Oh, there is an example 11 coming up too, so we'll need to do that one as well. So 6.3 homework exercises. Do number 9. It should be at calcchat.com and then do either 11 or 13. They're both at calcchat. 11's at calcview. Do 15 or 17. They're both at calcchat. Then do any of the odds, 19 to 23. They're all at Calc Chat. 19's at Calc View. Then do any of the odds, 25 to 29. They're all at Calc Chat. Then do any of the odds, 31 to 35. They're all at Calc Chat. 31's at Calc View. Do either 37 or 39. They're both at Calc Chat. 37's at Calc View. Excuse me. Do any of the odds 41 to 45, they're all at Calc Chat. 43 is at Calc View. Do either 47 or 49 or both, they're both at Calc Chat. 47 is at Calc View. Do either 51 or 53, they're both at Calc Chat. 51 is at Calc 
you do any of the odds, 55 to 59, they're all at count chat. 57 is a count view. Do either 61 or 63, they're both at count chat. 61 is a count view. Do any of the odds, 65 to 69, they're all at count chat. 67 is a count view. Do 71, it's a count chat. Do 73, it's a count chat. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, I think you can do those. We'll hold off 75 because that's like the example we haven't done yet. So we'll do that next time. All right. Any questions? All right. We'll finish 6.3 and move on to 6.4. That means Thursday we'll probably come close to finishing 6.4 and may even have a chance to get to 6.5. I doubt if we'll get to 6.6, but we'll try. Okay? Yes, sir. And then didn't you say we need to pick something that we like doing so we might write about it? Or that's, that's a good thing to do, but if you don't like doing anything, then pick something else and write about it. Okay. Yeah, pick anything that has, you can remotely tie it in the trade on okay. A person, place, a theory, an operation. What's your major? Uh, civil engineering. Civil engineering. Yeah, Calculate, you know, if you can find something on calculating the optimum angles for ramps on the highway, that's just one thing. I mean, you might not be able to do that, but whatever. If you have some interest somewhere, had a guy who was a forestry major, he said how they estimated the heights of trees using trigonometry. That might be. So anything like that, yeah. And it's one page? One to two pages. It's got it. it. Just, if it's on one single piece of paper, that's not long enough. It needs to be between one and two pages. But it can be longer. You don't get any penalty for being too long, but you do for being too short. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh -huh.